In this video, we will discuss the energy in chemical reactions. For any chemical reactions, there has to be bonds breaking and bonds forming to build new um, products. In any reaction, there is going to be an amount of energy that is involved with this reaction. And we call this, we call this enthalpy. And enthalpy is the amount of heat energy that's either released or absorbed during a process at constant pressure. The enthalpy of a reaction now is the change in enthalpy or the change in the amount of heat energy that is either absorbed or released when reactants yield products. If heat is absorbed, we will have a positive value for delta H. <clears throat> if heat is released or lost, we have a negative value for delta H. A one way to think about this is like looking at your bank account. When you deposit money into your bank account, it gets more positive. And when you withdraw money from your bank account, it gets more negative. So that can be a way to help you remember how to do this. Not only do we have enthalpy reaction for chemical reactions, but we also have enthalpy reaction for physical processes. And depending on whether you have a net release or gain of energy, you're gonna have a positive or negative delta H value. So what should we know about delta H? If we have a negative delta H value, energy is released, and it is what we call an exo, thermic reaction. And <clears throat> what we can say, let's break down this word exothermic. Exo, the little word exo means out. And the little word thermic means heat or energy. So exothermic means that heat is lost or energy out. Whereas if we have a positive delta H value, that energy is going to be absorbed. And then we have an endothermic reaction. And endo is the opposite of exo, means in. So we have energy that is going into the system. So let's take a look, a uh, closer look at what happens when reactants go to form products. In any chemical reaction, you have reactant compounds or atoms and any compounds that you have in the reactants, those bonds have to be broken. And in order to break bonds, energy has to go into that system to break those bonds. So bond breaking is an endothermic process. Whereas when we're forming bonds in the products, the opposite occurs and we end up releasing a certain amount of energy, and that process is exothermic. Now, when we think about the entire reaction, the delta H, or the enthalpy of this reaction, is going to be the enthalpy of the products minus the enthalpy of the reaction, reactants. And we'll take a closer look at that in a moment. So what happens? If we have more energy going into the system than going out of the system, we will have an overall endothermic reaction because <clears throat> more energy has to go in and our delta H is going to be positive. If this is a reaction that's taking place in a test tube or a beaker, if you put your hand on that test tube, it feels cold. What's happening? The energy is being absorbed from the surroundings into the reaction mixture. The reaction mixture is only those particles that are involved in the reaction. So the liquid solvent that the reaction is taking place in is the surroundings. The test tube is the surroundings. The air is the surroundings. Your hand is the surroundings. So when you put your hand on that test tube, it feels cold because the energy is transferring from your hand into the test tube and you're losing energy so the test tube feels cold. Whereas if we have more energy coming out of the system than going into the system, that overall reaction is going to be exothermic 
And if you put your hand on this type of reaction, put your hand on it, it feels hot. So what is happening? Those particles that are undergoing the chemical reaction are releasing energy to the surroundings, releasing it to the solvent that the reaction is taking place in, the test tube, the air, and ultimately your hand. So you feel warmth because that energy is being released, okay? Where is this energy coming from? It's coming from the potential energy stored in the chemical bonds. Depending on what type of substance it is, it may have more stored energy or less stored energy. Let's break that down a little bit. <clears throat> so, energy is stored in bonds, and we can look at it two ways. We can look at it as bond dissociation energy, which is the amount of energy required to break bonds within a compound at the gas phase. This must take place at zero degrees um, Kelvin and at one atmosphere. This relates to the strength of the bonds. So if it takes a lot of energy to break those bonds, it has high bond association energy and low potential. So it has low potential energy because it, think of potential energy as the, the ability to do work, right? So the potential to react. If I have strong, bond, strong bonds, I have very low potential to react, okay? Because those bonds don't want to be broken. Remember, you have to break bonds to form new bonds. So if it takes too much energy to break those bonds, it's not likely going to happen on its own. Whereas if we have low bond dissociation energy, we end up having weaker bonds and high potential to react. We have lots of potential energy, and when we break these bonds, we're going to give off lots of that energy, okay? So that's one way to look at the energy within bonds. <clears throat> and the next type, the next way we can look at it is the heat of formation. So to form any kind of compound, there's an energy change that occurs when you form one mole of a compound from its constituent ele elements. This is at 25 degrees and one atmosphere pressure. So the heat of formation is the enthalpy of formation, right? And we look at these two in opposite ways. So bond disassociation energy is the energy that goes in to breaking bonds. Heats of formation is the energy that comes out when we're um, forming bonds. Now, we always write bond dissociation energy and heats of formation as a positive number. It's always given as a positive value. Same as heats of formation, it's gonna be a positive value. So we can use this information to look at what is the delta H of a reaction. <clears throat> Remember we said earlier that the delta H of the reaction is gonna be the enthalpy of the products minus the enthalpy of the reaction, reactants. Well, enthalpy, is essentially the potential energy that's stored in our products and our reactants. So, delta H is going to be the potential energy of the products minus the potential energy of the reactants. Or, we can say it is the sum of the amount of energy that is needed to break the reactant bonds plus the re energy that is released when we form bonds. So, it might be confusing when you look at your textbook and it says, wait, 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 but it says uh, products minus reactants. How do we get that? Well, if I take a look at this, the energy to break bonds and forming bonds, we can write that another way. We can write that in terms of our bond disassociation energy and in terms of our heat of formation. So if I say, remember that all of these values are positive, right? So if I say my bond is association of my reactants, right, that's a positive value because what we have to put energy in plus the bond energy of the products. Why is this value negative? That value is negative because remember bond disassociation means breaking bonds. So if I'm forming bonds in the products, then that has to be a negative value. So when we switch that around, we end up with the bond association energy of the reactants 
minus the bond association energy of the products. What we're used to seeing is PE of products minus PE of reactants. Well, where do we get that from? If I take a look at heat of formation, if I'm looking at my reactants, remember this is a heat of formation as a positive value. But in the reactants, we're breaking those bonds, so we end up with negative heat of formation plus the heat of formation of the products. We're going to keep that positive because what? Heats of formation is a positive number and our products are forming, right? So then we end up with the heat of formation of the products minus the heat of formation of reactants, which goes back to our, our potential energy of products minus potential energy of the reactants. 